Okay, we're going to look at exponents. We had the idea of repeated addition a while back. We had addition, then we repeated it, and we got multiplication out of it. What would happen if we take multiplication and we repeat that? So instead of like 5 plus 5 plus 5, we have 5 times 5. And we do that over and over and over and over and over again. Sure, we can probably calculate that number and figure out how much that is. That's going to be a spectacularly large number. That's a huge number. But is there a better way that we can represent that? And the answer is to that, yeah, yeah there is. There's a better way we can represent 5 times 5 times 5. If we keep repeating that 5 and multiplying it, we can use what's called an exponent. The way we use an exponent, we have to identify something called the base. Then we have to identify how many times we're repeating that multiplication. In our case, the base is the number that's being multiplied over and over again. So can you tell me what my base is here? Five. Five, five is the, the number itself. Yeah, you're right. Number itself. So five. So we write that first. That's called our base. The number of times you've repeated that multiplication, so you count up the number of fives you have. How many was that? Seven. That seven, we write it just slightly smaller and we put it right here. That's called our exponent. These two things above my head, you know, above my head, right? These two things above my head say exactly the same thing. This says five times five times five times five times seven times. This says you take five and you multiply it by itself seven times. They say the same thing. This is just a more concise way to write it. We want to make things easy, right? To be able to do things like that. So that's called our base. The seven is our exponent. We also have some ways to say things, to say our exponents. If I write this right here, firstly, what does that mean? How, what's our base here? Five. What's our exponent? Two. So what this means is five, five, times five. Five. Five, times, five times five. You know, a lot of people do that and they say, oh, well, this means five times two. This is 10. This is not 10. How much is this? Three. This actually means five times five. That's what the five to the second power means. And there's two ways we can say it. We can say this five, we, we can say it five squared. You ever heard that five squared? Mm -hmm. yeah. Five squared. Wouldn't that only be if it was like a two though? A two or a three. We say five squared and the next one we're going to say is five cubed. All the rest of them, including this one, you could say as five to the second power. That's how a lot of people say it. So five squared or we can say it five to the second. Or five to the second power. Hey, someone who's with it today. This is five to the third or five cubed. How much is that? I think I could pull five. How'd you get that? Multiply 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. Yeah. So when, when we have 5 to the third, it, it literally means 5 times 5 times 5, right? Is it going to be 15? No. They're huge numbers. Can you imagine how much this is now? That's going to be massive. You're just going to keep on multiplying times 5. That's a, that's a big, big number. So this one, uh, I want to get to how we say this. This is going to be 5, we can say cubed. Or 5 to the third power. Blah, 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 blah. The third power. Everything else doesn't have a special way. Like 5 to the fourth is just said 5 to the fourth. There's no, no special word like 5 squared to 5 cubed. You just say 5 to the fourth, 5 to the fifth, and so on and so on and so on. So everything after this is just 5 to the blank power. We'll end with just a couple examples. Let's see if we can write these following repeated multiplications as exponents. And we'll be, uh, we'll be gone.
All right, everybody, what is our base right now on the board? Eight. Eight. What's our exponent? Four. Four. So we're going to write which number first? Eight. 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 Perfect. And how would you say that? Eight. Yeah, I don't want to hear, uh, I know you said it this way, but I know you didn't mean it. I don't want to hear eight to the little four. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what we're writing, yeah. But when we say this, we go eight to the fourth. That's how we do it. Base? Three. Exponent? Three. Oh, that was nice. Good score that one. Three to the third. Three cubed. Or three cubed. Very good. Three cubed or three to the third. Can you do... That one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you write this as one base, or do you need more than one? More than one. More than one. Yeah, you can't multiply the seven times ten. What we do is we'd say seven is the first base to what power? Seven. Seven. You can say 7 squared or 7 to the second. And then we just put a little multiplication and we do ten. Ten. to the fourth power. power. Perfect. Very, very good. How we will understand our exponents today if you're okay about this stuff. Awesome. We're going to end there today. We'll continue on this next time. So if you remember from last time, what we were doing, we, we were talking about exponents. And I think we did problems like something along these lines where we had a few numbers multiplied together. And we were supposed to be able to put those in what's called exponent form. And really all exponent form is is a simpler way to write repeated multiplication because this is just annoying to write over and over again. So we had two, two words that we, we learned. We had base and we had exponent. Can you tell me how many bases am I going to have up here? Two. two. Okay, what's my first base? Five. Five. To the second power. Second power. Perfect. Or you could also say where. Awesome. And then we're going to have a little multiplication. Our other base is four, four, four to the sixth power. Perfect. And that's exactly how we need to write that. Can we evaluate, by the way, when I say evaluate, it's always going to mean the same thing. If we have variables, it's going to mean you plug in numbers and see what mathematical answer you get. If I have just numbers, you're going to see what mathematical answer you get. Can we evaluate some exponents? For instance, Can you evaluate 4 squared? We've got to think about what 4 squared means, though. Does 4 squared mean we're going to get 8? No. What's 4 squared mean? 4 times 4. four. How much is 4 squared, then? 16. 16. Very good. All right. How about that one? I know, right? You want to immediately say, you want me to look at that and go, oh, that's 21. Because we have that in our head, multiply. But if we do just seven times three, man, we're gonna be we're gonna be way off. Okay, let's let's all work on it here. So we're doing seven times. What it means is our seven times seven times seven. If we just do the first set here, we're gonna have forty nine already, right? Right. So what we're gonna have forty nine times seven. How much is our forty nine times seven? I think you said it already. Yeah, it is. So we say 7 cubed, we're actually getting 343. That's a lot different than 21. So if you put 21, see for right now, our problems, they are these problems. You're going to get a couple like this on a test. But if this were within a problem, can you see how working with 21 is going to be way different than working with 20, or 343? You've got to really get these exponent things down. What would happen if you did a number to the first power? How much is 11 to the first power? 11. So it really doesn't, you're not multiplying it by anything. It's just there. We say we have 11, it's just one of them. They're not being multiplied by another 11. So 11 to the first, anything to the first gives you back that number again. Last one I want to do with you for now. We have 2 times 3 squared. We're going to figure out what this is. First thing I've got to ask you is, is it the 2 being squared, the 3 being squared, both of them being squared? Just, just, the just 3. Good, you need to know that. The exponent is applied just to the immediate base. So what this says is, OK, I'm going to figure out what my exponent is. How much is that, by the way, 3 squared? You don't want a lot of people to give me 6, because it happens so quick. They're trying to do it fast. 
don't give me six on this problem. So we're going to get three times three, we get nine out of that. So this really is two times nine, or how much is that? Perfect. And this is a great step, stepping stone right into our order of operations. You see, when we do mathematics, we all want to be able to get the same answer and all of us be right in it, correct? We want that. We don't want you to get one answer and you to get one answer and <coughs> you both have different answers and you're both right. That wouldn't make sense. Could, well, they'd both be wrong, right? I mean, that, that we, we can't have that type of scenario in mathematics. In other classes, you can, right? You write a paper about an opinion paper and if you have different opinions, it doesn't mean you're necessarily wrong. It just means you have a different opinion. There's no such thing as opinion in mathematics. It's, it's pretty much black or white. You're right or you're wrong. And the way we ensure that we're right all the time is that we stick with something called order of operations. You guys have heard this before, right? Okay. So we have this thing called order of operations. Are there any questions on the exponents before we get into this? You guys with me today? Yeah. Seems like it. You seem more awake today. Yeah. yeah. Took your coffee today or something, huh? Mm -hmm. What now? The order of operations is like our checklist for math. Every time you get a problem, you go down the order of operations and say, okay, I did my number one step, then I did my number two step, then number three, and then number four. There's only four. There's only four order of operations that we cover in here. <clears throat> and the whole, the whole idea is this. We need to be able to get the appropriate answer if I give you a problem like this. The question is, what do you do first? I'm going to do this two different ways. The question is, am I going to add this first and get like 7 times 5? No. And then get 35? Or am I going to multiply this first and get 4 plus 15? You see, we get drastically different answers, right? Only one of them is correct, though. We can't be doing things out of order operations, or else we get two completely conflicting answers. That's not a good thing for us. Which way would you say is the right way, though? 19. The second one. The 35 or the 19? 19. 19. If you're familiar with order operations, you know this one's right. But we're going to review those right now to make sure we're all on the same page. So here's our order of operations. The first thing that you do right off the bat, number one, you're going to take care of any operations within these parentheses. Remember how parentheses, when we said a while back, said do this first? Remember that? That still means that. It means you do this first, right off the bat. Parentheses is number one. So our operations, number one, we're going to do operations within parentheses first. Do all operations within parentheses I do want to make you aware of something because uh, I've had a lot of students come back and say, you know what, I didn't know how to do this problem because it didn't have parentheses. What it had was these funny looking things like this. These things mean parentheses also, okay? They just, they're going to be outside other parentheses. So parentheses mean these guys or these guys. Either one mean this situation. Step number one, you deal with these first. Nod your head if you're okay on that. Which one's right? These ones? The on top. But we're going to find out why in a second. That's a great question. Thank you for that one. So, first order of business. We deal with our parentheses first. We take care of all those operations. Then we move on to number two. 
we're going to look for, number two, if you know this already, you're going to look for any exponents, the things we just covered. And you're going to evaluate any exponents right then. So parentheses come first, but right after that, we're going to simplify any exponents. So if you want to keep track up here, we look for parentheses. Now let me set something straight for you. Please be, be listening and paying attention up here for a second. Um, even though we have parentheses here, do you see how there's nothing to do inside the parentheses? It's just the five. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That means they're done. The, the parentheses aspect of this is completed. It just means now a multiplication part. Are you with me on this? Mm -hmm. Then we look for exponents. We don't have any exponents. Now we move on to the next step. The next step in our order of operations, the next order, is we're going to do all multiplication and division. Here's the deal. A lot of people get this, get this wrong. A lot of people think that you have to absolutely do multiplication before you do division. That's not true. What's true is you do multiplication and division. Please make sure you write this down. You have this in your head. As they occur from left to right. So do you always do multiplication first? The answer is no. No, you don't. It might be that division came before multiplication. Okay, so you look, do your parentheses. You look, you do your exponents. You look again, you do all your multiplication and division, but you have to do it from left to right. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong answer. Not your head if you're okay. So I'm going to put them on the same step. We're going to do multiplication and division, but it's got to be from left to right. multiplication and division from left to right. That's kind of an important one for us. We'll see why in a bit. So let's see why this one's right and this one's wrong. If we went through this example again, it'd say parentheses first. You know what? These parentheses don't really count. There's nothing to do inside of it. We go to exponents. Well, there's no exponents. Then we go to multiplication division. Is there any multiplication or division? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a 3 times 5. So we went out of order here. We went out of order here. We added first. That was wrong. We had to multiply first. That's why this one's right. That one's wrong. Multiplication definitely comes before our addition does. Everyone with me on that one? Raise your hand if you're okay with this. Good, all right. So last step, the last thing that you're going to have with have after you've done parentheses, <coughs> after you've done exponents, after you've done all this, the only thing that can possibly be left in your problem is addition and subtraction. That's our last step. We're going to add subtract, but guess what? Addition doesn't necessarily come from before subtraction again. It's as they occur from left to right. So we're going to look at our problem. We're just going to go from left to right and do whatever we have there. Whatever happens first between addition and subtraction. So do, do addition and subtraction, again, from left to right. Like some examples on how to do these these type of problems? You bet. Good. We're, we're going to do a whole bunch of them. Uh, we really need to get this down. If we don't have the order of operations down now, when we get to negative numbers and things like that, we're never going to have them down. So we really want to get this just nailed so we can move on. You guys with me on that? So let's do a whole bunch of examples. Oh, by the way, a couple ways to remember or the order of operations. You've heard, uh, maybe some of you heard the. Have you ever heard the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally? Yeah. It's a mnemonic that kind of beats it into your head. Please excuse me. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. 
You've heard that one before, right? The other one that I like is the PEMDAS. You've seen the PEMDAS before? Yeah. PEMDAS is you just, you just write it. The only thing that I like better about this, and please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, is that I can show you that these two things are linked. It's not necessarily that the M comes before the D. They come at the same time from left to right, and these two are also linked. Have I ever told you my PEMDAS story? Do you want to hear my PEMDAS story? Yeah. It's kind of stupid. You still want to hear it? <laughs> okay, so here's my PEMDAS story. So I come from a place called Clovis. I told you this, right? Clovis is kind of a sheltered little town where nothing really happens. And so I went down to Long Beach, which is not a sheltered town, which lots of things happen. But I came back to Clovis. And so my first teaching job ever was uh, at a place called Dos Palos High School. Do you know where Dos Palos is? Mm -hmm. And so I went out there, and all my friends were, were saying beforehand, because they're all from Clovis, they don't really even know Dos Palos. Like, man, I think the gangs are really bad enough. There's not really <laughs> gangs. There's only 5,000 people. Nothing happens. And they could, yeah, the gangs are bad, man. You're getting shot. You better, like, you know, be careful where you're, you're best. So my first, I think my first, like, month there, I gave a test. And, uh, and I taught them all about this stuff. I, I'd never, I, I did the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally thing. I hadn't really, the PEMDAS was new for me at that, at that time. And so this girl turns in her homework, and, and, uh, and then her test comes. And she, she keeps writing this, this gang name on her test. I'm like, what are you doing? You can't write your gang name. And so, like, I, I bring her up, I go, and she's a real nice girl. I mean, she sits there, she does all her work, you know, real sweet and everything. And I bring her up, I say, look, I, I don't care what you do outside of class on the weekend, whatever, <laughs> you just can't write your gang name on, on my test and turn it in. She goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this this PEMDAS, I mean, that, that, that is that your gang name? PEMDAS. I'm like, what, what is that? <laughs> That's the order of operations. I'm like, oh, stupid. But I, I swear that happened, not even joking. So I thought that PEMDAS, that's why I first learned it was from her. So. Oh anyway, uh, that's my PEMDAS story. I told you it was a little silly. So if you write PEMDAS on your paper, I'm not going to think it's your gang name. I will understand now. Okay. Anyway, but it, it is a good rem reminder of how to do our order of operations. We can write this however we want. We use this as a checklist. We check off our, our parentheses. We check off our exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. As long as you're doing these from left to right, we've got this down. So let's go ahead and give a couple of these a try and see if we can kind of build on these problems. We're going to start off simply at first, then we're going to start incorporating some parentheses and some brackets, and we're going to make them kind of nasty looking at the end, but they're all going to be doable for us because we have this idea. Okay, I'm going to help you through the first two, and then I'm going to have you do two on your own before we start adding anything else up here. Uh, so the first thing I'm looking at when I'm, when I'm doing this problem, I'm going to model this for you. When I look at this problem, I'm initially looking for any parentheses. And if I don't have any, then I move on. If I did have some, I would have to do those operations first. So I look at this, I go, okay, well, I have no parentheses. Let's move on to the next one. So I check for any exponents. Do we have any exponents? No. Okay, no exponents. I move on to the next one. The next one is actually two of them. It's multiplication and division. So we look at this and we go, do we have any multiplication and or division? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever one comes first, left to right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that piece of it and then rewrite the problem. So when we do this problem, we go, okay, what comes first from left to right? The multiplication or the division in this case? Multiplication. So we're going to multiply. We're going to say, just ignore the rest of it. Do this part. How much is the 9 times 3? And we'll rewrite the rest of our problem. So we do that just piece by piece, piece by piece. That way, at this stage in your math careers, piece by piece is the way to go. Okay. Later on, when you just get to hammer this stuff down, you can do things different ways. You can do multi-steps at once. Okay. But for right now, it is piece by piece for us. You're with me on this? Yeah. Okay. So we're rewriting this. The next thing we look for is, do we have any more multiplication division? We keep on doing that over and over again until we're done with all the multiplication and division. Do we have any more multiplication or division? Yes. I see some. Division. OK, that came further on in the problem. So we're good here. Are we going to subtract now? No. Uh, definitely not. No, we're, we're not done with our division. So we're going to rewrite the 27 and the minus. But now we're going to ignore this part and do the 8 divided by 4 piece. How much is the 8 divided by 4 piece? 2. 
So we've checked for parentheses, there were none. We've checked for exponents, there were none. We had some multiplication and division. Multiplication came first, we did it first. Then we moved on, go multiplication, no, division, no, oh, division, yes. We did that little piece of it. Now we're down to where there's only either addition or subtraction. We can look for addition and subtraction. Of course, we have the subtraction. So we do the 27 minus 2 and get 5. That's it. And that's the correct answer. This lets us do some of these problems and all get the same answer and it's all the correct answer. favorite ones. This actually shows up on the final for your class. This one. Because it shows me just in like two seconds whether you really understand the order of operations or not. It really shows me that. We're going to go through it together. We'll do it together. I'll give you some on your own in just a second. So together, here we go. Firstly, we check for any parentheses. Do we have any parentheses? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Next thing I'm going to check for is any exponents. Do we have any exponents? Yes. When you do, you ignore the rest of the problem. You do just that little piece. Remember, it's piece by piece. So am I going to do 48 divided by 3 right now? No. no, no. Listen, look at the board. Am I going to do 3 times 2 right now? No. no. I'm going to do just this little piece. So we're going to rewrite the whole problem. 48 divided by 3, not plus 3, come on, 100, divided by 3 times, that times is still there, what is our 2 to the second power? 4. four. Yeah, two, two times itself, that's 4. Then we move on. We checked for parentheses, there were none. We just did, and we evaluated our exponent. Now we're down, there's no more exponents, we're down to multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So multiplication, division came first. We do it from left to right. So my question to you is, am I supposed to multiply the 3 times the 4, or am I supposed to divide the 48 times, divided by the 3? <coughs> Divide. I have some conflicting, oh, I got arguments. Let's do this thing. Divide. Debate it out. What do you think? Divide. Divide. 48. Divide. Comes first. I covered this part up, but that's important. Okay. If you multiply first right now, you will get the wrong answer. Okay, you will. Why? Why? It's, it's okay. You're learning right now. But why? It says that. It's like you're reading. Yeah, it's just like you're reading. When you're down to multiplication and division, it has to come from left to right. And you know what's, what sucks about these type of problems? Is if you did this, it's going to work out. You're going to think you got the right answer. Let me show you. If you did this this way and you got, oh, 48 divided by, that's 12, right? No. 12, 12, that looks like it's 4. You get a whole number answer, you're thinking, oh, I did this right. When in fact, this is the incorrect way to do this problem. Are you all clear on this? Mm -hmm. right. You have to go from left to right. So this way, no bueno, we cannot do that. Okay, the other way though, we'd say we're going to do multiplication and division, but we're going to do whatever occurs first from left to right. That's not always this one. I hope you're with me on this, folks. I really do hope you are, because uh, you are going to have some of these on your test. I want you all to get the right answer. We're going to do this part first. The 48 divided by 3, how much is 48 divided by 3? And then we multiply by 4. Now we're down to the multiplication. It's the only thing left. We can do this and get 64. That's our answer. Do you feel ready to try a couple on your own? Yeah. Ready yeah. on. Let's do this. Now, of course, this is the one, more, one of the more important things I've taught you so far this semester. Uh, so if you need help on this, you're really not quite getting it, I'm going to walk around for a couple minutes. If you need help, now is the time to get help on it. Promise. Don't wait. There we go. Just two of them, but there are two good ones.
If you got two on the second problem, you got two on the second problem, go back and look at that again. Something happened there. If you got two, second problem. Let's see how we did on these things. Hopefully we did well. First one, of course, we're looking for parentheses. There's none. We look for exponents. Again, there's none. We look for multiplication division. We're going to do it from left to right. So the first thing that comes up is our multiplication. We're going to do 8, eight, eight minus five. 3 divided by 3. We're just to go piece by piece for now. And then we're going to look for any more multiplication division. You saw it. We had the 3 divided by 3. That gives us our 1. And sure enough, we're going to get... Seven is our answer. How many people got seven? Good. Very, very good. Next one. Same ideas, but we, we have some exponents here. Parentheses, not so much. Exponents, yeah. So the first thing you should have done is done the four to the second power. It's not a. That's <coughs> Now here's where people did yeah. two different things. Okay? <laughs> Either you went the right way or you went the wrong way. Okay. The right way is multiplication division from left to right. The wrong way is you do multiplication the first, the first every single time, which in this case is going to give you the wrong answer. Can you always do multiplication first? The answer is no. No, multiplication does not always come before division. It matters whether one's before the other as you're reading, like you said. So from left to right, we go, oh, you know what? Even though there's multiplication and division, the first one I see is division. I'm good. Yeah, you know what? It's so easy to fall into the trap of multiplying because we always we see that easier in our head, right? It looks like multiplication is connected first. It looks like that. You go, oh yeah, I want to do this one first because it, for some reason in our head, it tricks and goes, oh yeah, multiplication comes first because you've been ingrained with that. However, if they're in the, this order, you can't do it. So we go, okay. So 16 divided by two gives us eight, and then we multiply the four. That's your right answer. How many got 32, by the way? Good for you. Good for you. If you didn't, that's okay. Go back and fix it. Maybe try this one later. Now, let's see what happens when we start incorporating some of these parentheses and these bracket concepts. See what we can do out of this thing. Is that like good enough for you? Yeah. Right? When you get that the first day of class, you're like, whoa. But now we, we kind of know what to do with this stuff. Well, I hope. Yeah. Look, we're going to work through this together. So you can see how really I want you to do it and get all those ideas down. So write down, I'll give you a couple more seconds to write that down, and we'll start on it as, as a team, as a group. What's the first thing you should look for in this problem? Do you see it? Yeah. In fact, you know what? Those brackets count too. So there's two sets of parentheses. Let me explain this to you. Those brackets count as your outer parentheses. These count as your inner parentheses. So here's how you would evaluate this problem. Check me out. Watch me on the board here real quick. You look for the innermost parentheses that you have. So this one says, yeah, I'm going to do that first. But inside this piece, I also have another thing that says I'm going to do this first. So this is like... Do this first, it's like do this first, first. It's more, even more first. Right off the bat, you do that piece. So if we're going to step by step it, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to leave this alone. Leaving that alone. 
the only thing I'm really worried about right now is what is on the inside of those inner parentheses there. So we're going to do that, just that little piece, piece by piece. What, is, what are we going to get inside this parentheses? Okay, great. So we just have a five. It's kind of like having a problem within a problem. You see that? It's a problem within a problem. Pieces within pieces. So now that we've accomplished that parentheses, we can work on more parentheses. So these brackets still count. We're going to leave this four to the third alone. We're going to leave that plus alone. In here, in our bracket, what's the first thing we're going to do in our bracket? Notice how it's a problem within a problem. What's the first thing we're going to do? Great, because it's like you're, yeah, exponents, great. You're going to go order of operations right through that mini problem, just a mini problem. So before we subtract, we're going to have to have our 9 minus 5. Minus seven times three. Somebody tell me the next thing that I want to do. Very good. Yeah, it's still in parentheses. Those brackets count. And so we're going to leave the four to the third alone. We'll have plus. Notice how when you evaluate the parentheses, you can actually drop them. So for instance, when you do the nine minus five, you're going to get how much? Four. 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 We don't need a parentheses around that anymore. You can have one. It really doesn't matter. But you don't need it. We can just write there. You okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then minus 7 <coughs> times 3 at the very end. And now we're back to a problem that we've kind of been dealing with so far. We've got all the parentheses out of the way. No problem. Next thing we're looking for is... Four and we have some. So 4 to the 3. 4 to the 3rd or 4 cubed. 64. Good. Yeah, it's not 12, right? We're not just multiplying. We're multiplying 4 times 4 times 4. Okay, let's think through the order of operations again. We now have our parentheses, we've done our exponents. The next thing I should do is... Definitely don't want to be subtracting here, right? That would not be the way to go. Now it is multiplication, there's no division anywhere. No multiplication before this guy. Hey, what's going to come first uh, when we do this? Addition. Is addition going to come first because we always do addition first? From left to right. Good. It's the first thing we see. So we're going to get our 68. 68 minus 21. How much are we going to get there? 47. 40. Oh, yeah, 47. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. I would like to try one of your own. It's very similar to this one, but make sure you can go through those steps and really identify the order of operations. Are you guys ready for it? We have fun yet? No. Yeah. Lie to me, go, yes, this is awesome. Ooh. Try it, go. <laughs> no, I don't need you to love math, but I do need you to be good at it. I don't care if you like it, I just want you to be good at it. Aren't you good at lots of things you don't like? I'm really good at washing dishes, but I hate washing dishes. <laughs> I hate it, but I'm good at it. <laughs> you know what? It really doesn't work the other way around, because if I was bad at it, I probably wouldn't have to wash the dishes, right? <laughs> it doesn't work that way with math. If you're bad at it, you still got to do it. Yeah, unfortunately. There you go, that's a nice one. Okay, what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to let you work on this on your own, but I'm going to put the next step up about every 10 seconds or so. So you've got 10 seconds of step. Let's see if you can finish this before I finish it and have the correct answer. So we started now. I'll, give, I'll put the first step up in about 10 seconds. And you can continually check your steps this way. So if you're if you're doing another step, look up here. Make sure you have that.
goes what now? It goes five seconds? Oh, well, I, I went quicker on the last one. After. The rest of them were 10. How many people got that? Got down to there. Good, good for you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Mr. Sunburn, you can do that. It really hurts. Okay. I think we got time for a couple more. What I'd like to do is one that's about as good as I can make it for you. I want to show you one thing on this that you need to see. A problem like this will be on your first test. I tell that to you so you can put a little mark next to it and study it. It will be on your first test. Hint, hint. It's going to be on your first test. Okay. So make a little mark next to this one we're about to do. Also, the other ones we're going to deal with a, what looks like a fraction. So we'll Okay, this is our last one, but I want your help with it, okay? So I want everyone to participate, and let's do this together. What's the first thing we should look for on this particular problem? Yep. Good. Why? Good. Uh, watch carefully, please. Would you listen up for a second? There's one thing you can't do here. One thing a lot of people do here, and this is one of the reasons why they have to struggle desperately in math A and math C. A lot of people think that we can take this exponent and move it here and here, and we cannot do that. Are you with me on this? Yeah. You cannot do that. Uh, you have to go more of operations just like you see them. We can't start inventing our own math because chances are it's not going to work out real well for us, all right? You've got to follow this stuff down. So we can't do that with exponents. Uh, the only thing we can do is follow order operations. So the first step is, as you guys said, is the 4 plus 1. Do we do anything with the 3? No. 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 4 plus 1 is? 5. To the second. That little 2, that 2 to the second power, that still is an exponent there. That's, that counts. Now, do I absolutely need the parentheses here? No. Since there's nothing well, inside yeah, of it, I, 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 could, I could have them. Or if you choose not to, since there's no operations left, what does it, it mean, the 3 next to the parentheses? Well, time. Blood. time. Yeah. So I could write that. Either way is fine, all right? It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to rewrite the rest of our problem. I've done the parentheses, what else do I need to do? Exponents. Sorry, the exponents. Now we've got two of them. Here's one thing you can do with exponents, you can do them both at the same time, that's fine. Other stuff, sometimes it depends on the other operations. With exponents, that's usually not the case. So we're going to do both exponents at the same time. Um, firstly, do I multiply the 3 times the 5? No. no. So I'm going to have the 3 times how much? 25. 25. Good, because we have 5 times 5. Mm. My, how much is 2 to the third? Oh, let's eight. think about that. Eight. 6 or 8. Eight. Definitely eight. I give you this on the test too. And a lot of people will give me six. Don't give me six. We got two to the third power, we're gonna get eight. Okay, next up we're rolling right along. We've done parentheses, we've done both of our exponents. Now we're gonna look for multiplied by which one's gonna come first in this case? Three times multiply. Multiply. Multiply is you're right, because multiplication's coming first. How much are we going to get when we multiply? So it's not a lot. Did you say a lot? Good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wouldn't that be awesome if math was that way? You get a lot or a little. Done. Seven minus eight plus six divided by two. The next step is going to be. Definitely divide. We still have that multiplication division go on. Three. We leave everything alone. So 75 minus 8 plus, what was it? Three. Three. Perfect. This is another one where people, people always do this. People always go, oh, I'm going to add first. 
Do we add first here? No. no. If you add first and get 11 and you subtract that, you get well, whatever that is, uh, 64. Not good. Not good. We, can, we can't do that sort of thing. It goes against the order of operations. I can't explain to you exactly why right now because we don't have the <coughs> our signs down. I can't treat this like a negative 8 like I would, I would show you that. So later on I will show you this. For right now you just have to trust me that our operations have to be done this way. So if they have to be done a certain way, what's going to come first? The plus or the minus? Minus. minus. From left to right we do that. 75 minus? 67. 67. Thanks, Jeff. 77. Yeah, last step is just to add that. Okay, last one we're going to do today. I just want to look at this problem for a second so that you don't you don't just kind of go, what the? What the come on, Leonard. What are you doing to me? It's uh, a yeah. fraction. That's a whole method. Exactly. <laughs> See, now check this out. These problems are pretty much like three problems in one. Watch, up, watch on the board. We're going to do this next time, but I want to show you what, what happens here. When you have a division problem, notice that this fraction, it means division, right? That's what it means. Yeah. It says, what you have inherently is a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here. So essentially what we're going to do, I'm going to show you this next time, we're going to start with this problem over here. We're going to ignore the bottom of it. We're going to do this problem all by itself until we get down to one number. Then we're going to ignore the top of it, we're going to do this problem down until we get to one number, and then we're just going to divide it. Nodja, if you're with me on that. Yeah, it's like three problems in one, that's really all it is. So we'll start there next time. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some homework on the board. Uh, this, hey, guess what? This is not going to be due tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> but it will allow you to get started on it because it's, it's a long assignment. And so, yeah, this got two days. <laughs> this will be due on Friday. We are almost done with this section, uh, so it will be due on Friday. Don't hate. Don't hate. Don't what? hate. He said don't. Never. Wow. studio. No, no, I'm not cool. I'm sorry. I just look cool. It's different. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. So that's where we're gonna get started today. Go ahead and write those down and get started on them. I'm gonna be walking around. Because this order of operations stuff is really important for us. If you're really not sure how we're doing these problems, let me help you. By the way, as you're working on this, what are the order of operations? What's the first one? Good, what's the second one? What's the third one? Good, yeah, yeah. Multiplication division is multiplication first or division first? Or does it depend? Multiplication. Okay, so left to right. And then after multiplication division, left to right.
also, you know what, just a, a point of order for the class. I'm having some people trying to slip in late homework with current homework without letting me know they're going to be absent. Guys, I'm just giving you zeros and handing it back. Um, so if you're, if you're not here for a day that homework is due, you still need to get it into me somehow or at least let me know you're going to be absent beforehand. Otherwise, I'm just going to put a zero on your paper and you'll get that back in the next few days, okay? So that's something to be aware of. Don't just slip in homework if you weren't here that day. It needs to be a zero. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm in 64. Oh, yeah, right? All right. I got so excited drawing the eights. They're fun to draw. <laughs> My bad. Get carried away. There, does that make it better? Yeah. Ah, okay. Sorry to hear, take a few more seconds, try to wrap this up. All right, so we reviewed order of operations. We know we're looking at parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication from left to right, and addition subtraction from left to right. So when we look at our problem on the left over here, we certainly don't have any parentheses, we don't have any exponents, but the multiplication and the division from left to right, that's the important part of this problem. If you got it, you got it right. If you missed it and you did the multiplication first, well, you probably got it wrong. So in our case right here, instead of going right for the multiplication, even though it's easy to do and make that mistake, we're going to go multiplication and division from left to right. The first step is this 36 divided by 6. So we're going to do that little part. We're going to get out of that. 6 times 3 plus 5. So the 36 divided by 6 is 6. Then we still have the, the rest of that problem. The next thing we'll do is we'll look at multiplication and revision still. In case we have any more, we'll do that, that piece of the puzzle. So the 6 times 3, what's that give us? 18. And the last operation is addition. We're going to add that. We're going to get the 23. Did you get 23? Yes. Good, good. Fantastic. Okay, next one's a little bit more involved, right? We've got some parentheses and some exponents kind of attached to each other. So we're going to ignore this part of the first part of our problem. We're going to go straight for our parentheses. That's what we do first. So I'll just rewrite it. Remember, at this point, we're really doing step by step, just piece by piece until we get this stuff just down. That way we get it right every time. We don't want to be rushing this. There's no reason for that. This is the problem we're working on right now. It's okay. So we're going to ignore everything else but that piece. We're going to get, instead of 8 minus 6, that's going to give us 2. But remember, that's still squared. Now, you can choose to do a couple things here. You can just put a 2 squared like this and multiply. That's okay. 
Or you can, if you want the parentheses there, you can have the parentheses there. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. So if you still want to do it like this, which some of you might have that on your paper, that's fine. As long as you've done the operations inside the parentheses first, you're fine on that. Do you understand that part of it? Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this just for fun. Because it's super fun, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. They're all saying yeah. Now you're on record. Ah. Okay, so now we go for our exponents since we're done with the parentheses. Now I know there's still parentheses up there, but what I mean by parentheses is operations within those parentheses, not just single numbers. So here we have the 2 squared. We're going to do that. How much is 2 squared again? 4. So we'll rewrite the 64, all this stuff. We still have the 4, and then the 2 squared, you're right, that's 4. Remember that the 4 next to the parentheses, that means multiplication. Now we're going to go on, since we've done the parentheses and exponents, we've got multiplication and division from left to right. What's the first thing we're going to do here, a multiplication or a division in this case? Yeah. So again, we see that division comes first from left to right. We'll do that piece of it. We'll get 8. As long as we're doing the, the 64 divided by 8 before the 8 times 2, that's the important part. So notice that the 64 divided by 8 gives us 8, and then we still have the times 2. 8 times 2? Plus, we have some more multiplication. We'll take care of that in just a second. We've got 16 plus the 4 times 4 gives us another 16. And lastly, when we add those two pieces together, we get... Ooh, do you feel okay with the order of operations idea? Yes, no. Nod your head, yeah. Or no. Okay. Now, I believe I did give you a problem that we haven't finished yet from last time, the one with the fracture bar. Did we look at that one yet? No, we didn't. I finished it. No. You did? But we didn't do it in class? No. no. I'll finish that up right now. Now what you need to know about these large fractions, well that's, that's what we have here, it's just a large fraction, is that the fraction bar implies parentheses. So whenever you see that, it says do what's on the top, then do what's on the bottom, and then divide. We can't do anything before that. So what I want to write down right now is the fraction bar means parentheses, or implies parentheses. The fraction bar implies parentheses around the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom. So what we're going to do on this problem, the way you do this successfully, you'd ignore either the top or the bottom first and do just one part, just work on one part of this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ignore the bottom, I'm just going to work on the top of my fraction and do it piece by piece. So when we look up there at the top, we're ignoring this part, okay, we're just going to ignore that for now. With the 25 plus 8 times 2 minus 3 cubed, what's the first part we should do quickly? We've done this several times now. Yes. Okay. And 3 cubed is 9, right? Three cubed. So if you guys are not with me today, you need to focus in on this stuff. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Very good. How'd you get twenty-seven? Because three times three equals nine, and you add times another three, it's twenty-seven. Perfect. So we're gonna leave the twenty-five alone. Plus eight times two. We realize we're subtracting twenty-seven here. And again, I'm just ignoring that bottom part of my fraction. I'll I'll keep going. Next step. The next thing we do is try to keep going on this thing. What's the next thing we would do in this problem? Multiply. Great. So we're going to have 25. I know that that's going to be 16 minus 27. We've got two more steps on the top. Yeah, John. Um, quick question. You said uh, the 
fraction, right? There's a fraction bars of parentheses. Yeah. But when there's no right parentheses, when you do that first, like the bottom part, because there's parentheses there. First. It doesn't. You get to choose. It's like having a bracket. It's like a, oh, okay. a bracket around the top and a bracket around the bottom. That's how I did. I just did you the can bottom. do the bottom first. It it really honestly, Jeff, doesn't matter as long oh, as you do the top okay. independently of the bottom. So do the bottom first and then do the top. That's fine. Uh, as long as you're doing one of them all the way to one number and the other one all the way to one number and then put them together. Okay, good question. Okay, next up. What do we have? You add. Great. So if I add these together, can you tell me what I'm going to have? What did you say? 41. Perfect. Only one more step. we got 41 minus 27 and that gives us? 14. So right now we've worked the numerator or the top of our fraction all the way down to a single number. That's really the process we want to do. We want to stick with it, just do it step by step till you get down there. Next we'll work on the denominator. The denominator is going to take us less steps, so we'll probably write the same number a couple times, but that's okay. What's the first thing we're going to do in the denominator? Parentheses. Now we're going to have the two stays the same, but in the parentheses how much? So the 2 times the 1, how much does that give us? Two. We're going to keep rewriting the 2 because we had those extra steps here. The 2 stays the same all the way through until we're, we have both, just a single number over a single number on both the top and the bottom. And now we can do what this problem says to do, which is? Divide. Yeah, we're going to divide. 14 divided by 2 gives us? 7. Seven. We're done. So it's not so bad if you really consider this to be like three problems in one. You've got one problem, you've got another problem, and then the final problem is put it together. That's really it. Try one of these on your own and then we'll continue. There we are. So get cracking on that thing. Remember, you can treat this like three problems. Do either the top or the bottom first, then do the other one, then put them together. Hey, by the way, how many people, just out of my own curiosity, have gone on to the website, my website? Good for you. How many people have actually watched one of the videos on there? Good. Awesome. Uh, for the rest of you, if you haven't gone to the website yet, you're going to this evening. I said this to the people who were here a little earlier. Um, I'm going to put the homework assignments on the website only for the next few days to make sure that you can get on there and, and find it, okay? That way you know that resource. Do I have homework and I do Hmm? We just sat the homework yesterday. I don't think we'll make it through the next section. I don't think so. So it'll be just just the one I gave you yesterday. Okay. And I'll give that website to you one more time at the end of this class to make sure that you can find it. Did you guys finish up over here? Okay, cool. Let's do this together then. So I'm going to work on the top first. I like doing that better than doing the bottom first because otherwise I have to write more fractions at the end. I just don't like that. So I'm going to start with the top of our fraction here. So top of our fraction, just like the last one, the exponents comes first. So we should have written on our papers 7 minus 2 times 3 plus this one's going to give us 9. Did you get 9? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Over, and we're going to... 5. Yeah, we're going to fill that in later. You can do it at the same time if you really want to. If you're good at following those steps, I don't really care. As long as you know you do the 
top one and the bottom one independently. That's really the key here. Then we'll do the seven times or minus six with our multiplication. Plus nine. Very good. Plus nine. What's going to come first here? Minus. If we add, if we look at this, if we add right now, we do fifteen. You're actually going to get a negative number out of that. Do you see that? For those of you who have seen negative numbers before, if you haven't, you'd be like, what do we do? Because that's the wrong thing. That's the wrong thing we, we do here. So we are going to subtract first and get how much? One plus nine. Perfect. We'll continue this on. One plus nine, that's going to give us ten. We stop there, then we work on the bottom of our fraction. So the bottom says we're going to do five times two minus one. That two minus one comes first because it is in parentheses. That gives us five times one. You can have parentheses or not. It doesn't matter. Five times one is five. We'll write that a couple more times. Two. two. That's exactly right. How many people were able to get two? Good. If you didn't, that's okay. Why don't you go back and try this again next time? If you want to follow this on the video, there's you can do that. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about in this section is just the area of a square. Now, we talked about the area of a rectangle. We can do the length times width. Do you remember that, doing the area of a rectangle? Some of you, no, 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 not a bit. That was a little while ago, it was like last week. If we're talking about the area of a square, let me tell you a couple interesting things about a square that you probably already know, but you probably never really thought about it. What's a rectangle? Four quarter on one Four square. Side. Four sides, okay. What makes a rectangle different than this shape? That has four sides. Is that a rectangle? No. Why not? Rectangle. Equal side. Two equal sides. Two parallel. Well, that has two parallel sides. Is that a rectangle? No. What else makes it a rectangle? Okay. That's equal on two different parts. No. That's a right parallelogram. Angles. Say it louder. Right angles. They are right angles. Do you know what a right angle is? A right angle means it's like the the. What was it? Ninety degrees. Ninety degrees. Like the the wall on the floor. It's a ninety degree angle. It means it's sticking straight up. Perpendicular is another word for that. So what we mean by a rectangle is okay. Rectangles, you guys, you had all the right stuff down. You do. You have two pairs of equal sides that are parallel, and you also have some 90 degree angles in here. That's a rectangle. Now, can you tell me, how's a square different than a rectangle? All four sides are equal. Yeah, they are. Does it still have 90 degree angles? Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. And it still has two pairs of parallel sides. So guess what? A square is a type of rectangle. Every square is a rectangle inherently. That's the definition of it. Not every rectangle is a square. Here's a rectangle that's not a square. Every square is a type of rectangle, a very special rectangle. What that means for us, if a square is a type of rectangle, If a square is a type of rectangle, we should be able to find the area exactly the same way. The way we found the area of a rectangle, let me erase this junk here. The area was, if you remember this, like the base times the height. Well, that's up to you. You don't have to write anything down. I would encourage you to, but I don't really care. So the area for a rectangle was base times height. Do you remember that from last time we did area? Yeah. Well, that means the area of a square is going to be the same thing. We could say base times height, but watch. Watch on the board here. When a square is, well, if a rectangle is a square like this, we all know something about the sides. They're all the same. So the sides of this rectangle are S and S, side and side. They're the same length. So when we do the area, Sure, the area is s times s. Do you see where we're getting s times s? Mm -hmm. That's still the base. The same as base and height. Right. The yeah. base and the height are the same. So this would still be base times height. It's just we have the same value there. Is there a different way we can write s times s? S, s squared. S squared. Perfect. 
that's where we actually get the word square from. S squared. So when we're looking for the area of a square, why it's called a square, we just take the side itself and square it. Brings me to my next question. If I tell you something's a square, how many sides do I need to give you for you to find the perimeter and the area? One. Two. Do you need two sides of a square? Two. It's a square, say it's eight inches. Okay, I'm gonna say this is a square, you got me? And one side is eight inches. How much is this side? Eight inches. This side? Eight inches. This side? Eight inches. So how many sides do you need if I tell you it's a square? One. Just one. Let's find the perimeter and the area here. We'll do it. We'll do I want you to do the perimeter on your own. Actually do them both on your own. See if you can figure that out. Find the area and the perimeter. It's a square. Square. Okay, let's get this done. Uh, perimeter. Perimeter means what's perimeter mean to you? Okay, so we're supposed to add it because it's the distance around that figure. So if it's the distance around that figure. How much is the distance around this figure? Four. 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 Now. If I'm talking about perimeter, please pay attention up here for a second. If I'm talking about perimeter, should I say 32 inches or 32 square inches for perimeter? Square. Just inches. Square. For perimeter. Perimeter. Inches. That's what they ask you, right? That's what I'm asking is what, should I say square inches or no. inches if it's the Just perimeter? Inches. Inches. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because square inches will be everything, right? Inside. Yeah, that would be the surface, right? Yeah. We're just talking about the perimeter means the distance around it. So we'd just be like, if you walked around this classroom, you would get something in feet, right? Yeah. You wouldn't get square feet if you walked around this classroom. If you counted all the little That's squares square in this, okay. hey, notice squares, right? You're going to get square feet if you count all the surface of this room. That's the area part of this. So when we're talking about area, I know that one side is eight inches, so. How much is the area? Eight. Well, how'd you get 64? Well, when we take, remember, it's base times height, but they're the same number. So we can actually just square it to find the area. So you times it? Yeah, by itself. On the area of a rectangle, we did base times height. Area of a square, we're doing the same thing. We're doing base times height. It's just you so happen to have the same base and the same height. So we're multiplying that number times itself twice, or in other words, we're squaring. So we're going to get a 64, and in this case, you all should have down there square inches, or whatever units you used. By a show of hands, how many people feel okay with this perimeter and area idea? Okay, if you're still a little rusty on this, come and see me or go to the math lab um, after this class. I'll be there for an hour, and I can clarify that for you. At this point, we're done with section 1.7. That means your homework that I gave you last time is going to be due when? Tomorrow. That's right. So if you got a jump start on it already, good for you. If not, you have a lot of homework to do tonight. Um, for the rest of our time here, the next 20 minutes,